just relax. We're, we're, we're used to that here. And, and honestly, please, just don't be, don't be worried about that. We do have a wonderful new little room for our mothers right there. If you do start to feel like it's a little disruptive and you're uncomfortable, you can hear. I hope the is a is a um, is a. That's the interrogation it's not, room. Oh, it's not turned on yet. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, if, if if you need to, you can use that room right there. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's the two important items I have. Amen. Amen. I made an, I made a comment. That's the interrogation room. Amen. What a blessing to be here this morning. I can't, I can't believe I see this place full, and I know a lot of you are just visiting because of the lunch. <laughs> but if that's what it takes, we'll do it every week. And, and, and don't hurry out there at lunchtime because everybody can't be first. Amen. Amen. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, God, amen? amen. And I, I, can't, I can't find a better place to, to begin to share with you this morning um, what's on my heart concerning this place and you. Um, God has seen fit to bless us, amen? amen? And that's why his name is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He who provides. And his provision is always over and abundant, more than we think, more than we can imagine. Um, no matter how limited it may look in our eyes, what God provides is great. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you would turn with me to uh, the 22nd chapter of Genesis, and we will give it a go. I want to begin reading this morning, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, the words that you have set forth, the words in your holy word, the words that you have provided us in our scriptures this morning, Lord God. Let it be your word and not mine, Father God, and let it go forth and accomplish that which you will and not mine in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, verse 1 and 2, I just want to read now, it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. And said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And God said, Take now your son, your only son. I find it interesting that God pointed that fact out to Abraham. He didn't say, Take one of your sons. He said, Take your son, your only son. And that must have struck the heart of Abraham when he said it. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. How many of us would have given up right there? Sorry, ain't going to happen. That's not you, God. That's not you. And yet God had a plan and He had a purpose that would be fulfilled but would not be fulfilled until Abraham came what? Into obedience. Amen? Let's read on. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, so we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, 
God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. When they had come to a place of which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand upon the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went up, took the ram, and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The Message Bible says, That's where we get the saying, On the mountain of God, He sees to it. On the mountain of God, He sees to it. I love that last verse. Because after all of that had taken place, God stepped in and said, I am your provider. I think so often we miss that provision out of disobedience because we're not obedient. We don't want to do that hard thing. We don't give in to the will of God who asks us to go above and beyond that which we personally think we're capable of or willing to do. If Abraham would have denied God, he would have never come to that place of provision. He would have never seen the the great and the mighty hand of God move on his behalf. And that that scripture in and of itself could could be spoken on for, for four weeks. Because of Abraham's complete and unwavering obedience, and that's what I want us to see this morning, his complete and unwavering obedience. Because of that, he held nothing back from God. Amen? And the result of that obedience was what? Provision. Amen? Provision. And He'll provide to everyone, even today, to this day, He will provide for everyone who walks in obedience to Him. Amen? Amen. Are we walking in obedience to God? Are we listening? Are we waiting? It's the same God that made the way for us to be here today. And I believe the reason that we're all here is because of obedience. I believe obedience brought us to this place. I believe obedience brought you here this morning. Something caused you to be here. Because we can come up with a lot of other things we'd be doing. Something, you might think it was you, but it was God's calling. And you're here today. An act of obedience. Amen? God made the way. I love Galatians 3.9. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Galatians says if, if, if you walk in faith, if you walk in obedience, I'm going to bless you just like I did Abraham. No different. It's the same today as it was then. I'm the same God today as I was then. If you want to see how I'm going to act today, take a look at how I acted yesterday. So I'm not changing. Before we purchased this property, before you purchased this property, we prayed. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. Before we started work, we prayed. While we work, we prayed. And you know what? We're going to keep on praying. Because I don't know where the sacrifice has taken us. I have no idea. I have my own ideas. But I don't have, I don't, I, God has not shared this is where we're going. He just said, from here we're going. Amen? And so we're going to leave this place and we're going to continue on. God's blessed us to be a blessing. If we can learn, if we can learn that principle, God has blessed you to be a blessing. If you can learn that principle, God has blessed you to be a blessing, you are going to discover that God is a God of abundance. But if, if we try to keep all of our blessings in our arms and keep them to ourselves, we will have no room for God to give any more. 
I mean to tell you, some folks are walking around, they are blessed. They've got it all, man, and they've got it all right here. And praying, oh God, send me more. And I could just imagine the Lord sitting there, you know, when you start releasing what I gave you, I'll bring you some more. But until then, that's evidently all you can handle. Amen. Amen. And so God is asking us this morning, come to this place, now let it loose. Now get rid of it. Are you willing to give it away? It's a possession. God gave it. Are we willing to give it away? Because if we're not willing to release it, God won't use it. It's got to be available. What we have here is nothing short of a miracle. This looks like the hands of man, and it is. And God used men in an awesome way. God fed through their talents. God fed through imaginations, dreams, visions. God fed that all him, but God did it. It was His miracle and not ours. It was His. And to Him be the glory. There's another miracle I want to take a quick look at, and it's in Matthew. If you all want to turn there, Matthew chapter 14. Here it is. It's a scripture we are probably most all familiar with. It's the feeding of the 5,000. Matthew 14, beginning at verse 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Yep. Yep. (laughs) The hour is late. Sending, send the multitudes away that they may go to the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have only five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here. Bring them to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude, so they ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. And those who had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. Miracles are the norm in the kingdom of heaven. They happen every day. We miss a lot of them, but they happen because they don't look like this. But miracles come in all shapes, all forms. Amen? A storm was stilled by the power of God on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus spoke to it and said, Knock it off! And it became still. A centurion had a servant healed because of his great faith. Amen? Amen. And 5,000 were fed because of the simple obedience of the disciples to bring to Jesus that which they had. Did you guys catch that? All God wants you to do is bring what you got. And he'll multiply it. Bring what you got. He'll multiply it. Jesus tells the disciples, y'all feed them. Amen. Right away, what do they say? We don't have enough. We don't have enough. Some of us only have five loaves and two fish, and we're looking to God saying, I don't have enough. And God said, bring it here. Bring what you got. And watch what I do with it. And then through you, use it. Bring what you got and watch me go to work. 
we don't have enough. I want us to take a look around at this place today. I want us to see that we've got enough. When we go out those doors, I want you all to walk around. I want you to see what God has given you. And I want you to know that it's, it's enough. And it is a abundant unto us this morning. God is able to do exceeding and abundantly all that we can ask or think. Amen? Well, He did. So let's start asking and thinking something different. Okay? Because this is done. This is done. And, and we're here. And let's start asking something more. All right? We okay with that? Take it home. Do it at home, too. You can do this in your own home. Jack Hayford said something like, he said, have you ever found yourself ducking the call of God on your life to do something? (laughs) God, you liars. I bind that spirit of lying in the name of Jesus. Did you ever duck the call of God? Yeah, not me. Have you ever said stuff like, God, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to do that, but you got, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong girl. I don't have the stuff. I don't, I don't have what it takes to do that. You, know, you need to find somebody else. And that's just the point. Because Jesus doesn't call us based on what we have. He calls us based on what He has. Amen? Amen. We fall short of miracles all the time because not, we're not willing to step out. Till I can find that next step. Amen? And God said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not the way it is. He, he calls us always on the basis of what He can do through His power through us. Amen? Are we open to that? He knows how to give it to it. He knows what the right stuff is, and He knows how to give it to us. He gives it to me in different ways than He gives it to you. I don't know how He gives it to you. I know sometimes how He gives it to me. <laughs> but I know He does. That's the point. God has seen fit to give us this place so that we can give it to others. See, we've we've got this place. We've got to give it to other people. We've got to ask other people, come with me. Come see what God gave us. Come come with me. Be a part of what we're doing. That's a part of what you're called to do this morning. I think He intends it to be a turning point for us, and I believe it is. Will be and shall be. Um, It's time for us to quit asking what we can get out of our church. And start asking what we have to give to the community that we live in through the church that God has given us. Amen. 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 As you walk around today, don't focus on what we don't have. Okay? Don't go out there and say we don't have real good lines in the parking lot. Okay? (laughs) There was one line. We thought you could take it from there. (laughs) Don't walk around seeing what isn't here, but open your eyes to the dream that God has given, to the possibilities that exist here for you, for your community, for you, for others. One of the greatest struggles in my life has been Seeing the true abundance of my Father God, that has been so difficult for me. I could receive out of His abundance, I, I, but, but to see His abundance. I was, I was brought up, I was raised with a, oh, you can't have that, it costs too much. We just don't have the money mentality. And, 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 and so I've, I've carried that through, and it's like, You know, God, we can't quite do that because we don't have the provision. We can't quite do that because I don't have enough. 
And so I carried that through my life. One of the hardest things has been for me to just lay it down and receive from God. When we wanted an air conditioner, when I was a little boy, mom wanted an air conditioner. We didn't pray for an air conditioner. Mom went down to the packing house and packed tomatoes and until she had enough money for an air conditioner, went and bought an air conditioner. It was great. It was wonderful. But that's how it was done. I'm not telling us to all go get loans. <laughs> At all. What I'm saying is that as a body of Christ, we need to retrain our thinking Amen. to a God who is a God of blessing, a God of supply, a God who seeks to give so that we can give to others. It's not for us. We have nothing that, that wasn't from Him. Nothing in this room was not first from God. The wood, the carpet, the, the cloth, the, it was all His. It all came about because of Him. And He wants us to use it, not abuse it, but use it. So walk around. Look at the house. Look at the place God has given and allow your, your brain to dream. Mm -hmm. Allow your spirit to open up to possibilities. Oh, what could I do here? You know, I could, I could start, I could use this facility to start a, a, a club. We could do a hiking club. We could do a shooting club. We could do an archery club. We could ride horses down here on a weekend. We could allow your brain to open up to God. And don't let your, the pastor isn't going to design all this. I tried that. Nobody shows up. <laughs> but I'll show up for you. I will. Right. Open your mind to the possibilities. There is a room filled with talent right. here. There is a room filled with, with spirits of the Most High God. There is a room here filled with saints. My God, turn to somebody and tell them I am a saint. St. Denny. St. Denny. You want to know what God's abundance looks like? I'll tell you. When we were kids, we used to pick up dandelions and just pick them up and go, and man, those seeds would just float out. You want to see the abundance of God? Go do that. Because that's what it looks like. The Holy Ghost just goes, and God's seeds just go out. And they plant themselves. They're awesome. Maybe we don't have everything we want. Maybe we don't have everything we think we need. But I'll tell you what. God says, God says, it's enough. He says, my thoughts aren't your thoughts, boys and girls. And my ways, not your ways. God says, I have more, more than enough. The bottom line is, take a walk and see what God has provided. It's out there for you. Look at the provision that God has given and then find yourself, find yourself, find yourself in the provision God has put here. Great place for a dog trial. Find yourself. Find yourself in the place God has given you. Great place for music. Find yourself. Find yourself in the place that God has given you. And then use it. Use it to glorify Him. And He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. I like that part. You know, Jesus says, cast all your anxieties upon me. 
And he would tell us, would you just go sit on the grass while I do something here? I'm going to blow this crowd apart. Sit down. We don't have to busy ourselves and worry ourselves about provision, where it's going to come from, where it's going to go. I want to go do this, but I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I tell you what, if God sends you, you've got enough. And if He sends you and you don't think you've got enough, when you get sent, you'll have enough. He will provide. He broke, He blessed, broke, gave to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. God gave to the disciples, and who? The disciples gave to the multitudes. The disciples give to the multitudes. Amen? Amen. We're all disciples. We give, and God gives through us. That's what He's going to do here. He's provided. He's going to continue to provide. And not only in this place, in your own personal lives. Through what? We discussed it earlier. Through obedience. He'll provide your needs. He will. Testing. Testing. Boy, I really got quiet. We've, not many of us, grown up in a Christian home. And so we can have a little bit of difficulty tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. I had a Jewish man tell me that when they would have their little babies, they would bring them up to the Torah, those big wooden scrolls in the front of the church, and they'd dab honey on the wood, and they'd let the baby suck on the honey, teaching them that the Word is good. The Word is good. The Word of God is sweet. He's going to use this through us to bless others, that He might be glorified, providing abundantly so that there would be abundance, blessing so that we could be a blessing. I know you all thinking, let's eat. (laughs) I just fed you. I think that's on. I'm not sure. We need a 12-year-old to turn that on. I'm 12. I can turn it on. This is one crazy church. <laughs> this is great. I'm looking around and I'm like, well, I think you got to start, I think you got to start that new sanctuary soon. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is great. I don't think these are all just visitors. Yeah? <laughs> so I have the word of the Lord for you today. I mean, we really got the word of the Lord here today. I don't know how many of you got that spoken to you. And uh, I hope that some of what I give you here falls in line. God says, all hands on deck. I said, God said, all hands on deck. Because God wants to use this people in the community. And he wants to use you in such a special way that you will bring my resurrection and my life into the community of God. 
that you will bring my word and my thoughts and my intents to this community and to the people even around this community because I am sending you out into this community to be effective changers of the life that they now know, says God. Because I want to bring them my life which is in you, a life that cannot be diminished and cannot find death. A life that will bring life to those that are out there crying, there is no God, where is God? I send you, says the living God. Yes, to my community. And you have in you everything you need, says the living God. I said, the Lord said, you have everything in you you need already. Because I am your provider. God says, this move that I will do through this house will not just affect this community here locally, but it will actually expand out. You will see people coming from really far away to join themselves to this house. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because they're going to hear that the word and the love of God is allowed here, celebrated here, embraced here. God says, I'm sending you out and you to bring what you have in you, the deposit I put you in you already to this community, to this world, and see who I will bring here. God says you will bring them into this house for healing and you will bring what's in this house out there for healing. Because there's some that can only be healed out there, says the living God. And there are some that can only be healed in here, says God. God says, all hands on deck. And God says, unless I build the house, they that labor, labor in vain, that try to build. Because men labor And I build, and I will build up this house, says God. And out of it will flow resurrection and life and healing to many around and to the nations, says the living God. They'll come and say, we've heard that miracles happen here. That's me, says God. God has a very special personal word for some here. He dropped this on my heart in the middle of the night last night. He said, there are many here who have dedicated their life to me. God says, well done. Well done, but don't stop there. And God says, there's some of you out here that have had struggles Oh, maybe you showed up at my house, but your heart wasn't all there. God says, I'm a forgiving God. And it's not over for you either. That I still want to use you. You're still able. You're not past the time of your usefulness in me, says the living God. And God says, there are some here today that are, yeah, just visiting. Like, what do I do? What do I have to offer? God says you have everything. Because what I will use you to do is my glory and my honor in the earth. I will expose myself to the earth, says the living God. And I will do that through you. Do not think that you're too young to do that. Too late walking in the doors. Too little. But God says, I will use you. And I will use you for my healing. I will use you for my health. And the disappointments, they will go. And I will heal hearts. And you will be effective for me. 
in a way that you never believe you could be. Because I approve of you, says the Lord. You are my son. You are my daughter, says the living Lord. Awesome. You do? You got something to say? These are our very dear friends sitting in front. They don't go to church here. I don't know why not. You can tell because they wear ties. <laughs> Where's that night? No. <laughs> so I asked the Lord, what do you have for Country Cowboy Church, Lord? The word of the Lord from, that he gave me was a fresh start. Hmm. That was the word he's dropped in my spirit, and he began to explain to me. So I want to preface this. We had our first meeting with the pastors months ago about what you all were going to do here. And as we sat and we talked, I don't know if you remember this, Pastor Jack, but we said, boy, that's going to be a great fellowship hall. Remember that? Because way back then, the Lord dropped in my spirit that this is just, and I want you to hear this, this is just the start. See, God has given you as a possession, this place, like he spoke to Abraham, said, I will give to you as a possession the land. You're not renters here. You're Amen. owners here. Amen. See, and this place here is already too small. Look at her. Look at you. <laughs> but God says, so here's the thing. A fresh start I'm going to give you. This is a scripture my pastor gave me years ago before she went to be with Jesus. It's Psalms 26, verse 8. It says, Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your honor dwells. And she had that printed up and put it in a frame. This was before we had printers and different things. She had somebody do that for me. And I said, Lord, what does that really mean? And God says, what is my house? And I, I had to think about that for a second because I'd been working on the church here for years and I went, wait a second. We're your house. This building isn't the house of God. We're your house. And the Lord said, yeah, but where does my house come? Where is the habitation of my house? And I went, oh, is that the church? Is that the fellowship hall? Is that my own home? The Lord said, yes. My church dwells in a habitation. And he goes, what does the rest of that scripture say? The place where my honor dwells. What does the scripture say? It says, bring your tithes into the storehouse. Right? Mm -hmm. Honor me with your tithes and offerings. So we bring our tithes, we bring our offerings to honor the Lord in this place because we believe what God says he will do. He will take that seed that we bring in and he'll multiply it. He'll bring that offering in and he'll make it bigger than we can even imagine. That's where we bring it. And where is it? It's in this habitation of his house. So we love this place. Love what he's given you. But God says, I have so much more. This is just the start. It's a fresh start because he says, without a vision, the people perish. So have a vision for the more. How many want the more? How many want the more? God says, I've come to bring you more. Have a faith for it. Have a vision for it. 
If you don't have the vision for it, ask of me, says Father. I will give you the vision. I will plant in your spirit that which I plan to do. Because I have prepared you for what I am preparing you for what I've already prepared for you. So be ready. I will do so much more than what you ask or think. I will do abundantly more, says Father. This is just the start. Think of it that way. This is the beginning of what I plan to do because this, this one building is too small to do all that I have planned for you. You know, as we were singing that song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, it's such a true thing. There's no end to the faithfulness of God. But I believe it right now it's our turn to be thankful. We need to say, Great is our thankfulness. Amen. Great is our thankfulness. We are so thankful for what God is doing. Not not just the wood, the, the, the building, but for all of you that are here. And I pray that God will call you unless you, if you don't have a home church, you just found one. Amen. And it's just the beginning. I am so glad. You know, I could say, well, I've done my thing and it's time for me to rest. It's just getting started. Amen. Come on. Come on. And so say it with me, Lord. Lord, we are so thankful. We are so thankful. Great is our thankfulness. Great is our thankfulness. Unto you, O God. Unto you, O God. In the name of your Son, Jesus. In the name of your Son, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I didn't prepare anything at all. I'm just standing here waiting. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I'm like, what's so funny about that? (laughs) Anyway, um, I can't miss an opportunity. Um, I mean, uh, I'm just in awe. You know, I just honestly, people have been asking, you know, uh, wow, what do you think? And I just, I'm telling you, that's just my word. I'm in awe. I'm just in awe. I never saw this coming uh, 18 years ago, 19 years ago. I'm not sure, you know. A lot of you know we started in a little garage. And, and uh, well, prior to that, I never, ever, in my wildest imagination, thought that my husband would be called to pastor a church. <laughs> <clears throat> it's the truth. I mean, honestly. And, uh, and he was, uh, he was uh, wise enough to wait because he, kept, he, he, he heard the call, but I didn't. And, and so he, we waited a year. And one day, I mean, I can tell you where I was. I was standing in front of my kitchen sink in my 490-square-foot mobile home. <laughs> and I heard the Lord say, yes, I am calling him. And I was just like, oh, what? What? And so that began the journey. And so, uh, again, I am in awe. I am in awe. And uh, we need help, folks. We need help. And uh, it's not just a one-way deal here. Um, Where's Aaron? Aaron, where are you, brother? Where are you, Aaron? Yes, you. <laughs> Only Aaron here. <clears throat> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use what you sp- said to me to emphasize the point I'm trying to make. Aaron sp- stopped me the other day. He's he's been an integral part of uh, getting this building put together. And uh, Pastor Jack said, I don't know what I'd have done without him at times. You know, he just has been such an asset to us. 
And Aaron stopped me the other day and he said, he said, you know, I've been going to this church for a year and a half. And he said, I, I, you know, I like this church, but he said, I've never really felt a part. And he said, now I feel like I'm a part. He spent about two weeks here just working, you know, and when we work, we have fun. And, uh, and, 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 and you begin to develop relationships. And so I mean it with all my heart. We're not beggars, people. God is our provider, and, and he will provide those who he calls. But, but we've been talking about obedience. Yep. He's called every one of us. And so uh, I just want to encourage everybody here, get in. Get in. Uh, you will never be the same. And it's good stuff. So thank you. Everybody who had a hand in this, like Pastor said, for your prayers, for, 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 for all you ladies who clean toilets. Uh, I mean, from the top to the bottom, to just thank you. Thank you. Uh, and God bless everyone. Yeah. Morning. Uh, for those of you who've been with the church for a long time, you'll, you'll recognize some of what I'm talking about. Some of it was before my time. Uh, this church body here that God has given pastor to be the shepherd over, this has been the growth history of this church, y'all. As Denny stated, it started in a little garage, and God said, it's time to move. And we went to the church in Standard, where I joined up with you. And God brought me there, and it's been awesome. And we reached a point there where God said, it's time to move. It took him a couple of times telling us that, but. <laughs> <laughs> and we were obedient, and we moved to the building we just left. And look at the growth that happened there. And a lot of you have been here the whole time. And look at the growth that happened. And every time, moving from the garage to the church, God has brought the people alongside to make that possible experiencing from the standard church to the building we just left, God has brought the people along to make that possible. Coming to this building now, not only God supplying the property in the building, he brought the people alongside Aaron to make it possible. For those that were here during this whole thing, the talents that God brought here in order to get this done, that's just the beginning of the use of his talents, y'all. Because you know what's going to happen? We've seen it every move. We're getting ready to explode again. And we're getting ready to move forward. And it is up to us in this room to bring those talents together. We've heard the words that were brought to us. You know what? Those are words of confirmation because it has been our history in this church body. And we are going to look to God to see what this next adventure is. I don't know about you all, but I'm ready for the ride. Amen. 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 You know, I, I'll tell you why it took so long to move from Standard to the church up down the road. It's down the road now. <laughs> and and it's, it's, it's the same reason that I had difficulty leaving a garage for Standard and Standard to there and there to here. You can't have that. It costs too much. And we don't have the money. <laughs> Bottom line. But I always had people, praise God, alongside of me that said, yes, we can. Yes, we will. And either move or get run over. <laughs> and that's why we're here today. It, it really is. It truly is. And, and so I said that to, to tell you, I need you. I need you to say, yes, we can. I need you to say, why not? I need you to say, let's go. I need you to say, let's do. I, I need those things from you. Because it doesn't start in that office. It starts here. And it's got to be here. God's speaking to each one of us individually here today. And, and you need to hear him. Amen? Somebody say amen, because that's really good. That's a really good place to say amen.
And let's pray. Father God, we do give you thanks, Lord God, and we do give you glory, Lord, for this time, this place, this purpose, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you for our facility. We thank you for the the water. We thank you for the power. We thank you for the the acreage that you've given us, Father, to expand and to build and to grow in, Lord God. But we seek your direction this morning, each one of us individually, Lord God, seeking not only direction for our church, our church body, our church, facility, but in our own personal lives at home, Father, we need your direction. We need your voice. And Father, we need your Holy Spirit to build that obedience in us, the willingness to step out where there is no bridge, step out where there is no step, step out where there is no more firm ground, only your hand. Father, we thank you and we are grateful to you for this. We thank you for the fellowship that we have one of another, Lord God. Everyone sitting by somebody in here, standing by somebody in here, is standing next to a fellow believer. Someone who loves the Lord. Someone who desires to do his work. Father, we thank you for that. That this is a safe place, Father. We We see our fellowship as a campfire, Father, a warm and welcoming place, a place where we can come and be who we are and and not be judged by the way we talk, the clothes we wear, the shape of our face or the size of our foot. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that this is a safe place. We thank you, Father, that if you ever find anybody that makes it not a safe place, we'll spank a tar out of them. Yeah. Father, we ask your continued blessing as we fellowship outside. Lord, this fellowship lasts just as long as the daylight lasts or the evening lasts and last man standing here. Father God, we are out to have a good time today and to celebrate what you have done, to celebrate what you have given celebrate the purpose that you've given us so we ask your blessings father on the food that's been prepared for us today father the hands that have brought it father god the love that was put in we ask lord god your your the power of your purification upon it lord god i pray that we don't overindulge that none of it goes to waste father god Father, it is your provision that we receive. It's a gift from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, your Son. And I don't know how, but you saw this day coming when the first nail was being driven. When this place was first being built, you saw this day and you said nothing until it was time. You are gracious in what you give. You are gracious in what you withhold. Because if you'd have told us, we'd have tried to make it happen. But Father, this day we give you, and this celebration we give you, and our praise we lift up to you, and we do it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we don't get out this door until we give somebody some sugar. And then when you do go out, you better listen to them ladies out there. And don't get mad at them. God bless you, everyone, and thank you for being with us this morning. Enjoy your afternoon.